Welcome to Pub Talk, the unofficial official craft beer podcast of Oklahoma, where we're all about the three B's, beer buddies and bullshit. I'm Jeremy, and I'm joined as always by a guy who would jaywalk in front of racist cops just to taste some fresh hops, Michael. Mm. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> That's a tough one. <laughs> right? <laughs> I was just imagining you like trying to cross like sixth and Utica to get from like Solera to walk towards nothing's left or vice versa. Man, it'd be scary, but I'd do it. <laughs> I'd get, I'd get, take a few seconds. I would, but man, I'd, I'd question myself. Yeah. Do that thing where I'm like, you're not a pussy and make myself do it. Just got to use that. Key. <laughs> uh, yeah. On today's show, we'll talk about uh, my first trip to Tulsa's uh, newest area brewery, the Tulsa area's newest brewery, uh, the Brewers Association's top 50 craft brewery list, and more. If you like what you hear, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Give us a follow on social media at Pub Talk Podcast and check out our website, pubtalkpodcast.com. All right. Well, let's get started with the first round. You know, they brew 10,000 bottles of beer a day. I drink 45 off the assembly line, and I'm the asshole. And I'm the asshole. All right. What are you drinking? Uh, well, I am drinking two things in order to not get drunk, which makes no sense. Sounds backward. But, but hey, it's pub talk. Um, the first one is just a seltzer because I'm trying not to get too fucked up. It's from Reftel. I got to try their new, I don't even know what the line is, Skyline, something like that. They were pretty good. Pretty good. You know, some of the flavors aren't up my alley, but uh, like I don't like coconut shit. Um, but this one's pretty good. It's a uh, watermelon prickly pear or something. Yeah. Um, but the real beer that I'm drinking is from Stone Cloud. It is their banana fluffy fingers. Oh, motherfucker. I want that so bad. Um. 13.2% ABV. Holy buck. Um, what else? It's an Imperial Stout with... Well, it says it's a peanut butter sandwich stout. Which apparently is a stout with banana, marshmallow. Do you have to drink it on the toilet? Elvis style? Right. Mm, poo particles. That adds, That's that other fucking adjunct. Um, but it's got peanut butter and, and chocolate, of course. Um, I, don't, are they, I guess it's... I don't know if they're making this a series or whatever, but they had made... What was the other one called? Just fluffy fingers. Fluffy fingers, yeah. It was just peanut butter. Um, I think this one's peanut butter banana, right? So yeah, peanut butter banana marshmallow. Um, pick this one up at Beer Garden. I'm fucking addicted to their delivery again, so I keep getting shit. Actually, when went to order something from them, it just said fluffy fingers. I'm like, I, I'm just gonna order that just on the off chance that it's the peanut butter version because they had just announced it at Stone Cloud, and it turned out that it was so. Happy fucking day. Um, it's fucking delicious. I've only taken like one or two drinks. The first flavor I get is banana Laffy Taffy. I used to eat those like a bitch when I was a kid. I'm not a bitch. Eat them a lot when I was a kid. Um, <laughs> so it's really good flavor profile. Peanut butter's there a little bit. Maybe if I set it out a little bit longer, get more flavor. But I really get that banana up front, which is weird. It's a little, not a, you don't get that a lot from beers. Not a lot of banana beers out there. Um, but really, really, really fucking good. Sweet. Well, you rate it? It's sweet, too. But is it too sweet? Not at all. Okay. That was a wrestling reference. No. So. Man, I don't know. That would be really easy to drink really quick. Well, we made that mistake on the Rapture episode. Why not again? Let's push that one over to the side for a little bit. Uh, I fuck, man. I'd got the nostalgia flavor with the pe- the banana. I'm sure it'll get better with the peanut butter and shit as it warms up. It's not. It it's really good. It doesn't taste too fucking strong, which is a little scary because it's thirteen point two percent. That's a that's a easy four point four point four nine. Okay, really, really fucking good. Damn. God damn it! Gotta get my hands on some of that. You said beer garden. I'll have to. Yeah, and I just looked at their website. Really, it's still there on their yeah. on their site. I, I doubt actually it. all the way out here. I'll have to make a trip, but 
It actually says banana fluffy fingers now on the site too. They had a bunch of cool stone cloud stuff on there that I picked up. What do you drink? Well, that's what I need to do more of is buy beer. I don't do much of it. <laughs> I am drinking something from our, our friends over at Broken Hour Brewing Company. Uh, it is their shenanigans, Irish red. Um, so obviously it's an Irish red, 5.2% alcohol by volume. Um, it's weird because I'm not a big fan of reds. And I think I said that on another recent episode after I had a couple that I liked. Um, I don't know if my tastes are changing or if I just happen to have had several good ones, but I'm digging this. Uh, I put it in my nice tall boy glass here, two cans of it. And it's uh, going down smooth, as, as, as they say. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, it, I, I, I had always associated reds, and maybe I just had had bad reds, uh, with like almost like a rust flavor or just like a, just like a shitty bitter aftertaste um, on the back end. And the last several I've had, uh, one that, that Mitch brewed, uh, one from Airy Abbey, and then this one have all been really smooth with smooth without that on the on the back. So um, pleasantly surprised. Um, I don't know. I, I wouldn't rate this super high just because it's not my style, but I'll put it somewhere in the mid threes, like a three, six, one or so. Well, probably a dumb question, but is that beer made? Is that style made all the time or is it just for, is it everywhere now because of St. Patrick's day? Well, I mean, people make reds, but yeah, you see it everywhere because of St. Patrick's day right now. Um, I know some people have had it as like part of their, what's that shit called? Their flagship lines in the places we've gone, but yeah. Did you just talk about one not that long ago? And I've seen them post a lot, but probably dumb. Probably has to do with St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, I mean, hey. it, it depends on, uh, I would think that a brewery that maybe has an Irish theme or something like that. You know, I mean, if you went to Kill Kenny's year round, I'm sure you can probably get a red there. That's not a brewery, but you know what I mean? Um, I always think of too whenever I think of um, Irish Reds is that place and yeah. there's also a red I think that starts with a K or something uh, Killians Killians yeah which is probably the first red I had yeah. anywho for a long time that's the only one I had and or at least yeah. the only one I can remember right now that I had and that's one of the ones I didn't particularly enjoy so I mean, just don't yeah, see a lot of people they don't, don't see a lot of people you know talking about that style of beer like it's not a lot of folks favorites Mm-hmm. That's nice. Have a good one. Yeah, this one's good, and I mean, honestly, it, drinking Broken Arrow beer gets me hyped for our three hundredth beer coming up. Uh, this is episode three ninety three, so you know, less than two months. That's wild. Fucking wild. Yeah. Got to say, my glass. Probably my new favorite glass. Compar- Conspiracy Glassworks. Probably my new favorite company. It's a screaming hop. Uh, all right. Well, um, we're doing these regularly again, so not as much stuff happens between episodes, but, uh, there's been some stuff and I guess, um, I guess I'll kick it off with, uh, my beer adventures from this past weekend. So, um, you know, I took a, I took a little afternoon out drinking some beers, had, a and, I can't remember the name of it right now, but I had the new stout at the Nook that's gone by now. Uh, it was a pastry stout. It was fucking good. Um, uh, stay puffed or something like that, maybe. It's gone by now? Oh, yeah, it's gone. Yeah, they were on the last little bit of it when I was in there Saturday, and it had been tapped on Thursday. So, uh, in fact, I think, I think he was only pouring tasters of it at that point because they were so low. But, um, yeah, it was good. It was good shit. Um yeah, I mean, as as always, it's uh, always been a good experience when I've gone to the Nook, third or fourth time there now. Um, you know, nice people, spacious tap room. Uh, you know, solid beer. I I recommend people check it out, especially if you're in the Broken Arrow area. Fuck there, I I didn't realize until I was driving from um, the Nook to my next location um, that I'll talk about here in a second on Saturday. But the Nook's only like maybe a mile and a half, maybe two miles from Broken Arrow Brewing. It's not far at all. 
So, yeah. Hmm. Um, but yeah. Uh, so from there, I mean, the ultimate destination was obviously the Rapture, um, uh, Sugarfoot Stout release uh, out in Kellyville. But since it was on the way, had to check out the Cape uh, in Jinx since it was along the highway there uh, coming from Broken Arrow towards Kellyville. And um, <laughs> and it sounds like it was awesome. <laughs> um, I, well, okay. So my... I try to be honest on this podcast without um, shitting on things, uh, right? So uh, complete transparency. I did not particularly enjoy my experience at the Cape on a Saturday. Um, there was a dog event going on uh, that, that crowded up the tap room of dogs and kids and other people that, as far as I could tell, weren't really drinking or, or partaking in anything. Great to have the dog event, don't get me wrong, but several of the dogs were fighting with each other and it was just kind of chaos. Um, they had real long lines to get beer um, that I think I could probably chalk up to either being understaffed or maybe inexperienced due to how new that brewery is. Um, it just seemed like maybe they hadn't quite worked out their system because I, I didn't see a need, I mean, I, you know, I'm not, I don't work bartending or beer tending, but it did not seem like that place, although it was busy, it didn't seem like it was busy enough that a line should have been forming with two or three people behind the bar. Um, that said, uh, I do want to check it out again, you know, when it's not a hop and ass Saturday afternoon. Um, I only had a couple beers there just because I wasn't willing to wait in the line multiple times um, to try more stuff. Plus, I knew I was going to drink some more Rapture. But, uh, you know, it's a really nice, pretty uh, space. Um, is it big? It's, oh. it's, it's big. It's, it's uh, got a little, I don't know, entertainment type area, like a grassy... Um, outdoor area right next door to it that I don't think is theirs, but that, you know, people, um, can kind of overflow there. Um, take beer to it, even though it's not theirs. I don't think they can take the beer out there. I I'm guessing, but, um, you know, the kids and the dogs and stuff could run around out there. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, it, the decor was, was nice. It, it was well put together. Uh, <clears throat> it was, it was a pretty top room. I don't know how else to say that. Um, but the um, overall experience, like, eh. it's not the first time I've had a, a rough first impression of a brewery that I've, I've gone on to like. So hopefully that'll be the case here too. I mean, you know, it, it just makes sense that um, you iron some things out as you get going. So, yeah, I mean, like, like I said, I would, I would check it out if you're in the area, maybe give them a little bit to get some stuff figured out. Um, it's still cool to have another player in the Tulsa craft beer scene. And, uh, definitely for those that live in South Tulsa, I mean, you didn't have a lot of options and now you've got another one. So, um, but yeah, we left the Cape to head over to Prairie Creek farms to go to the Sugarfoot Stout release. Um, you know, we got there pretty much right when it started, uh, chatted with Tom Gilbert from Tulsa world a little bit. It's cool to see him. I haven't seen him in, I don't know, at least a few months um which he dropped some knowledge on me i wasn't aware of i was going to mention on here um that wild brew is happening this year but it's going to be in november uh not the traditional august so something to look forward to i don't have any further details on it than that hmm. um but yeah but yeah uh do what that's cool to hear yeah you know, anytime. Yeah, I mean, I feel pretty confident that by November, most folks will have had a double dose of the vaccine and surely we'll be looking okay. Yeah. Um, 
we uh, ran, ran into several other folks out at, at Prairie Creek Farms. It was good to see. It was a really good turnout. The weather was awesome for it. Um, Mitch had a line. I was there probably about two and a half hours. He had a line the whole time. Um, oh. beer, so that was really cool. Um, you know, Joe and Joe, and Nikki, and I bought a couple of crowlers apiece and parked our asses on a picnic table and drank that shit. It was awesome. <laughs> How does that work? Do they? Do you just? Well, I've seen the pictures, so it's not you're not drinking out of a fucking crowler, growler, or crowler or whatever. They give you the glasses or whatever. You buy the cups and shit. Yeah, yeah. Or he was he was selling the rapture the glasses with Peter on it as well. Oh, there's Peter glasses. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah so that, yeah, it looked like there was a good turnout. Some good pictures mm-hmm. out there. Yeah, porch was hanging out right by the the beer table pretty much all day. Um, and yeah, I mean, I you know I. I guess I, I guess I'm a homer for Rapture at this point, but uh, fucking the, his sour base is my favorite sour uh, in this fucking state, probably. Period. Crap beer wise, right now. I he had the raspberry promise out there as raspberry sour, and it had been a minute since I'd had any sour, just probably since last summer. So fucking good, dude. Makes fucking awesome beer. <laughs> No, I had stuff going on that day. No, I was gonna be able to go. So I'm like, when you said that it was, it was all gonna sell out. I'm like, God damn it! If I don't get any more of this fucking beer, and then saw that Beer Garden had it Monday, and I'm like, thank God, bought up a few bottles. I believe, uh, I believe, Mitch's exact words were, "Dude, where's Michael?" And I said, "It's not my fucking turn to watch him." <laughs> and, uh, we already had shit going on with the kids, so I I would like to go out there sometime with the kids because of the fucking animals. And oh stuff. yeah, I think they'd have a blast. Amelia, I finally made it back to the fucking zoo for the first time in at least a fucking year because what the this shit kicked this pandemic shit kicked off a year ago, and then winter and shit leading up to that, so we didn't get out there much. You know, there's a couple years there where I went there at least a few times a month. I was out with that bitch all the time. She loves fucking animals, and so we went there again, and it was. Like nothing happened. She loves that. It's so weird that she doesn't remember any of those times we went before when she was a fucking kid. But kids don't remember shit when they were three or four, apparently. Two, three, and four. Two and three. Um, but yeah, I think I think they would really like it out there, especially porch and the little tours and stuff. So, yeah. Oh, uh, there was a rooster running around. Um a couple of dogs. For any of us, any people that listen to us that have kids, you should take them to the zoo if you haven't been lately because they have an amazing fucking park. Like they didn't, I remember last time I went, they were building it. It was like future progress and all the shit they were going to do. And it's weird now that I've got, I'm back now and it's all fucking done because of the coronavirus. They probably had plenty of time to build all of it. So yeah. it's weird seeing something new at, at that too. Can't wait till they get the carnivore exhibit whenever that happens. But yeah, rapture beer. I digress. No, I mean, I was... That was pretty much it. I just, I, you know, I believe they're going to try to do a release once a month now. Keep an eye on the, on that on their social because it's a good time. It's great beer, um, and it, yeah, it's a little bit of a drive depending on what part of town you're in. Um, but I mean, I to me, even from Oklahoma City, it's not that bad. Just saying, it's it's what 20 minutes outside of Tulsa 30 minutes outside of Tulsa which means it's an hour or so from Oklahoma City so no one has an excuse except my douche neighbor who keeps driving his engine and should fuck himself what did the roads seem better this time because you've always said the roads suck going there did they seem <laughs> oh, better the roads weren't better Oh, the, the roads were worse. Why do people get damn? What if someone fucks up, like drives off into a ditch or something? Jeremy from Pup Talk told me that this was fine. Then, then, just drive slow. You're good. <laughs> you can't tell me that people in Oklahoma haven't driven on shitty pothole filled, in some cases, gravel roads all the goddamn time. Oh man, it makes me so anxious too. Some fucking hillbilly wedding not that long ago, or I guess before the pandemic, and had to drive through all these goddamn dirt roads in my car. And I'm just like, I fucking hate these people. They weren't my friends, so I could hate them. <laughs> but I'm just like, God damn it. 
Why have a fucking wedding? Just because you have a country fucking wedding. Yeah. Stop. Stop. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't get me wrong. I've had a couple anxious moments up there where I've uh, even in even in the Jeep where the gravel kicks up and it kind of causes the tire to spin for a second or something, but I don't know. That's cool. They're doing it like help maybe do it once a month. Definitely make it out some month. Yeah. I mean, I'm, Every, I'm, yeah, their beer is awesome. the beer is fucking awesome. If you didn't make it, fucking order some or go to beer garden before it goes away. Well, and if you don't like stouts, I mean, uh, or if you don't like whatever beer the release is, um, you know, th- he always has other beer there too. So uh, you can buy crawlers. You don't have to drink them there. You can take them home or do whatever. I, um, <clears throat> I think I had an IPA and obviously I already mentioned the sour. I think I might have had a Pilsner out there too. He has several other beers other than whatever the, the focal point release is. So, you know, uh, I don't like stouts or I don't like, you know, saisons or whatever the release maybe isn't a good excuse to not go. Just saying. Especially if Prairie sells their shit too, right? Prairie Creek. Yeah, Let me see. yeah they were there. They had a big uh, egg and meat sale going on Saturday. There were quite a few people lined up for that too. I, I you know, I'd be shocked if both Rapture and Prairie Creek didn't do good numbers Saturday. That's fucking awesome. And did I see that one was one of those crawlers that slow as lightning? Because that beer is fucking awesome. Yeah. Did I see that in what pictures? Was it? That's awesome. I good believe fucking so. beer. Yeah. What else? Well, let's see. Um, Marshall's releasing an awesome beer on Saturday. <laughs> Barrel aged Big Jamoke. Damn it. That's awesome. I think pre-orders are up right now. I, I think they're still up. They are. Um, whatever's not ordered, they're going to sell on Saturday. I hate that it's being released on a fucking Saturday. It's going to, I guess, force me to have to pick it up on a Saturday. <laughs> um, but it's still cool. You pre-order it pretty easy. It's awesome they're making a barrel-aged version of that fucking beer. Yeah, one of my favorites of theirs. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm definitely going to pick some up Saturday, maybe Sunday. We'll see. Um, um, did you see that Nothing's left is teasing a festival. I did. I tried to look it up before the show too to see what the fuck it was about. Yeah, uh, a lot of, a lot of Green questions. Freeze Fest. Yeah, I, I haven't talked to them. I don't know anything more than that image they put out the other day, but I can only assume it's going to be a slushy fest. Maybe they're going to have like slushy bongs, and you can go up there and get see and get the worst brain fees. Just beer chug a slushy beer. There you go. That's smart. Should someone do that? Yeah, that uh, looks like that's going to be May first, a Saturday. So I would, I'd keep your eyes on that if you're into beer festivals, and certainly if you're into slushies. Did you see the news coming from uh, Belching Beaver this week? I did not. Okay. Uh, so they're they hunting blonde. Do what? They didn't do something fucked up, did they? <laughs> well, their honey blonde uh, has always been named Me So Honey Blonde. Yeah. Okay. Some beer blogger um, posted calling them out for it being a racist name because, you know, anti Asian uh, with everything that's been going on recently. And my dumbass read it and was like, huh? How is that anti Asian? It's just a two live crew reference. Then I Googled it and I didn't know it was from Full Metal Jacket. And I didn't know where. The two live crew sample came from. Oh, hey, I don't feel as bad now. Oh, well, like, that wasn't. Exactly. That really. Yeah. <laughs> so then when I put all that together, I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm glad they're dropping the name. Yeah. Anytime I see something like when I want, <laughs> I hear because people do the, the miso insert whatever. And I'm just like, oh, this reminds me of that movie. Then I'm like, oh, wait, no, that's fucked up. But for me, I watched that movie like, I don't know if I say this. I watched that when I was a kid <laughs> with my dad. It was a big, he was a big war movie fan or whatever. Yeah. So I always go to that when I hear me. So anytime I even hear the fucking, the, the two live crew song, I think of that. I always just thought about two live crew. You know, they were racist and sexist. And oh yeah. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to say that they should, that there's anything redeemable about two live crew <laughs> hindsight, but Hey, I, I mean, no secret to people listening to the show. I love me some old school hip hop. Grew up on that shit, and that that's song's all. included. 
Wouldn't listen to so, it now. I don't think I could, but. Did you say they did change the name? They are going to change the they're name? They're changing it. I can't remember what the new name is going to be, but yeah. Good they, for them. They put out a statement and, you know, I, I felt like they handled it appropriately. Change the name. Yeah, even though I even though I said that it reminds me of the movie and all that shit from when I was a kid, I understand. That's the right response is to fucking, right. oh, wait, you were offended by that? I'm sorry. Let's change it to something else. Oh, there, you know, you can go back and watch movies that were made relatively recently and there's all kinds of offensive language in them and stuff that's not okay by today's standards we watched super bad a couple weeks ago and i was like oh none of this would fly but mm, i need to watch that again <laughs> uh, i used to watch it of a certain f word that's not fuck okay yeah yeah that used to get dropped all the time and hear that on quite a few movies we've watched recently i'm like wow it's so crazy how much that was used in the past and then i'm yeah. just like you learn, you don't do it anymore. Yep. Unless you're a piece of shit and you're like, well, words shouldn't hurt you. Uh, or, yeah, you know, it's always been that way. It should always be that way. No. <clears throat> I got to share this beer that I'm drinking now. I have to. Oklahoma Oil. Hmm. Black IPA from Stone Cloud. Okay. Fucking awesome. Nice. It's a beer garden, too. Okay. Yeah, Stone Cloud's killing it. Just killing they fucking, it. They are. I'm liking that people are doing black IPAs more. It seems like they're just rolling out left and right now. It's where yeah. the cycle that craft beer goes in. Like sours and shit for the most part. You don't hear much about them. <laughs> they just fucking disappeared. Yeah. Everybody that drank too many sours is nursing a stomach ache five years later. Uh, I assume you saw the NFL is going to 17 games. I know that's not beer, but I, I just, I, you know, we talk about the Cowboys on here a lot during football season. And I just had to say, we get to see them lose one more time a year now and no more eight and eight. <laughs> oh yeah. There's no, can't, you can't, can't have go for, a record. Can't go. For, wow. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could do eight and eight and one. Yeah, I saw so many fucking NFL players just pissed about that. They don't understand why they're going another week. I would hope they're shrinking the preseason down, but they probably won't because they're stupid. I think they are technically doing that, but I thought I saw that the Super Bowl is now going to be like the 13th of February, and it's actually going to extend the regular season later. So, I, you know, anyway, that happened like an hour before we started recording, so... Yeah, I saw that shit. That's just fucking wild. The Cowboys, speaking of them, have not done dick <laughs> in fucking free agency except signed back. So next year will be good, I'm sure. Okay. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> there weren't any problems last year fixed, so let's not do anything. No, and they actually got rid of, like, they let a couple people that were, like, actually good. They're just gone now, too, because they didn't want to keep them, so... I, I did see that Dalton's gone, which I'm okay with. Yeah. <laughs> he might wind up being the fucking starter in Chicago. Who knows? Because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. yeah, I don't. It's weird. It's weird a whole nother game. I, I don't know. I'll watch, I I'll watch every excruciating second you know, like I do every year. But I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do if we actually make it to the Super Bowl. Or actually. I remember good. what we said we would do back on early pop talk. But you got to take age in consideration, and is that cape? Are you capable of doing shit? I don't like know my old ass shoulders can support that anymore. Right? Yeah, I don't know. Man, that's good. Um, I was gonna bring up. Um, we've talked about it a couple times, but the CBAO enthusiast thing. If people haven't done that yet, they did post um, what the actual like discounts are at the different um, breweries across the state. 30 something breweries and different things ranging from like 10% off drinks to percentage off merchandise, but actually shows you what each into what each brewery is going to do. Um, you find that on their Facebook page. Pretty dope. Yeah. Speaking of brewers associations, the national brewers association, I'm going to, I'm going to be fancy again here for the video people and share my screen. Um, they released the top 50 craft breweries in the U.S. today. So um, I thought this was interesting. I don't know if our 
our fans and listeners will find it as interesting as I do, but most of these in the top 10, especially are uh, collections of breweries and or um, partially owned overseas, which I don't love. Most of these I understand. I don't get the thing with Shiner though. Is Shiner owned by somebody? Uh, yeah, I can't remember the name Gamb- of the well, I don't. It's Gambrinus or whatever that is. But, um, but yeah, I mean that number four there is is Boulevard. Um, Sierra Nevada makes sense. I mean that shit's everywhere and rightfully so. Boston Beer Co. Sam Adams. For those that don't know, I don't understand Yangling being number one. I've had that beer once ever. People love that shit, man. I don't know how many beer groups I'm in, but that's like the main beer posted. Yeah. Every, it's people crazy. go on. I, I had it at my road. brother's wedding and it was shit. They go on road trips to pick that shit up. I don't, I don't understand that. I've had it once before. It was, it was regular. It was beer. It was beer. Yeah. It was fucking it was, beer. This is yellow shit. Uh, Can Army, I get that. I've had some beer from them from Crap Shack. Good stuff. And they're still yeah, technically. Can, Can Army just owns a bunch of different shit. It's yeah, it's just a bunch of craft brewers, so it's not yeah. actually technically not craft. Yeah. Uh, Oscar Blues and Deep Ellum and a few others. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then you know Bells and Stone and Sweetwater and some of these that make sense. Harpoon was that big. That's cool. Yeah, well, and they own Clown Shoes, which is near and dear to our heart. Um, yeah, if you keep going down here, some of these are surprised. Like Gordon Biersch is like a brew pub. I thought. Huh. Uh, I didn't know that they like were a big player. Um, Price Allagash is that low? With as much as I hear about them, Flying Dog, they're still up there. That's crazy. Yeah, I haven't. They must have stopped distributing here. I haven't seen them in forever. I, I had one from them not that long ago. Did you? Then, ah, shit. Tripping over my stool there. And then uh, Rogue at number 37. I, I feel like they probably used to be a lot higher, but I don't know that for sure. Yeah, I didn't know Surly was Minneapolis because Matt, when he's on the show, has always has talked about Surly a couple times. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, and then Left Hand down there near, uh, at number 47. Um, nice. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, then when you go to top 50 overall, when you exclude the craft definition, it's, it's disgusting. <laughs> Yingling, that was number one, is number seven. So the top six are all big beer. And, you know, the point of this show and pretty much everything we do is to try to help fix that, especially in Oklahoma. Wow. Yeah. Anyway. Sharing the screen, that's a smarter idea. I keep forgetting that you can fucking do that. It's much easier than trying to clip it in later. Plus, we can both look at it at the same time. Is there a button that does that? Yeah. Oh, it's right. There. It's just share screen. Noted. That's a good idea. Only kind I have. As another. <laughs> Especially when drinking. Man, that is so good. Yeah, I mean, you have anything else? One sec. I think that was all I had. Where did it go? Yeah, that was it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we're still cruising towards uh, number 300 here. Actually, let me step off screen. We hadn't seen it in our stories yesterday. That's what it looks like, like that. Oh, that's awesome. I don't care about really, really well. 300th sticker. So we're going to. Uh, give a bunch of these to Broken Arrow Brewing to give out when we release the beer. And if you ask me nicely, I might send you one before then. That's awesome. It's a really good size. Like, I legitimately thought with that first picture you sent me that it was going to be like like this. It's like, who the fuck's going to put a dinner plate somewhere? Right. No. I, I came out. About four inches. Yeah. Which is a lot for a sticker. Not a lot for other things. Uh, Anywho, <laughs> yeah, I um, I don't know. We haven't necessarily scheduled uh, much in the way of spotlight episodes as, as we're in this run up to 300 for a few reasons. The biggest being we've been traveling a lot just to drink beer. Uh, yeah. But uh, if you're in the industry and you want to 
get something scheduled definitely shoot us a message direct message instagram um facebook or you can email me jeremy at pubtalkpodcast.com we'll get something going otherwise we'll you know fit them in where we can um i don't know we've got a handful we've got in mind well i guess that's gonna do it for this week um michael closes motherfucker down You've just listened to another round of Pub Talk. If you like what you heard today, show us some love all over social media at Pub Talk Podcast. And to continue getting alerts every time we drop an episode, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button before you go. You can also find out all you've ever wanted to know about the show and more by heading over to our website, pubtalkpodcast.com. And remember, folks, there's never anything too big or hard in life that you can't handle it over a few beers with your good friends. So until next time, just chill to the next episode.